You are leaving money on the table if you're not doing this. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Ecom Freedom YouTube channel. My name is Mikhail Rasmussen. I'm a mentor in the Shopify Ecom Freedom group and I have done multiple six figures throughout my Shopify journey. Let's get right to it. We have a lot to go over today. So first off, what is email or SMS marketing? Uh, this is a type of direct marketing that uses personalized mass emails or texts to educate and convince your lead to take a specific action like making a purchase. Email works in combination with SMS marketing to bring an additional 20% revenue for your business. So if your business is doing $10,000 a month in sales and you're not utilizing email marketing, you're leaving on average about $2,000 uh, just down the drain. 10% split between email campaigns, which are manual campaigns you're sending out to your customers, whether it be a sales email, a new product drop, or just an informational campaign. Uh, and the other 10% is typically done through a flow like your abandoned cart or your welcome series. The main difference is uh, the campaign is something you are manually creating and sending to segments or lists of your audience size. And then for the email flows, this is something that you would set up for like welcome flow or abandoned cart flow. This is segments sent to segments or lists of your audience. So if someone entered their email on your pop-up, uh, for your website, then they would be entered to your welcome flow, which you would send them uh, one email a day over the course of three days or however you set it up to hopefully get the sale and incentivize a, a discount for the purchase to push it through. This is one of my months in Clavio. As you can see, I have about a seven, seven and eight percent split. So 7% of the revenue that came in through my email marketing came in through my flows. And then the 8% was through manual campaigns I was sending to my audience. Uh, and I typically send anywhere from from four to five emails a month to my audience unless we're in Q4 and then I'm just blasting them with emails. Diving into flows first, flows that you should add ASAP if you haven't. Uh, Klaviyo has great templates to start with and tweak it to align with your brand. We're gonna start off with the email flow. Essentially, this is an introduction to your brand and is what your customers are subscri subscribed to, like I said earlier, when they enter their email on your pop-up. This is one of the most important slash most profitable flows you will have on your website. And again, you need to set this up as soon as possible. It will help your brand cre uh, credibility and incentivize any potential customers that are yet that have yet to buy from you just by sending them slight discounts over the course of three days of them adding to the cart or just visiting the site. Now, one website I like to use often when I'm designing my emails is either Canva or I also like to use this website called reallygoodemails.com. As you can see my screen here, uh, you can just go to categories on their website and then you would just scroll down to inaugural and then you can click on welcome. So this will just show you a ton of different like <clears throat> welcome flow emails that other brands have used and you can take inspiration from. Um, so again, this is a great place to just come get ideas, see what other brands have done, and then you can kind of curate your own welcome flow email. So I'm going to show you an exact screenshot of the welcome flow I use so you can copy it for your business. Now, no, this is not a one size fits all solution. I definitely recommend split testing the days in which you send the following emails and even the subjects. I mean, you really need to test everything here. This is just the general outline of what I'm doing. So someone's entered into the welcome flow, they get an email or slash text. <clears throat> we wait about one day, send them another email. Uh, and then after that one last email after one more day. And in all of these emails, we are offering an incentive to push the sale through if they have not purchased yet. Again, this is one of the most profitable flows you'll have uh, when it comes to automated flows that are set up. Next, we're gonna go to abandoned cart flow, which again, uh, you can take inspiration from the really great emails, or sorry, really good email site. Um, same thing, you can go to categories. Uh, first one under behavioral is abandoned cart and essentially you'll wanna just scroll through here, see what your other brands are doing. Uh, and quick tip, what you can do is actually subscribe to your competitor's uh, email list and add to cart, do all the functions you would do. So add to cart, maybe even purchase from your competitor just so you can see all of their flows and what they're doing. Because chances are, if you're just starting out and, you're, and you have competition that's spending money on ads, I mentioned this in my previous video, they've spent more money testing what works and what does not work. So uh, taking inspiration from what your competitors are doing and then making it better is a great way to get started. So definitely go follow your competitor's email flow so you can get some insight in what they're doing. Uh, and again, here is a screenshot of my abandoned cart flow. Uh, like I said previously, none of these flows, screenshots in which I'm showing you are one size fits all. Uh, so I definitely recommend split testing 
uh, everything in the flow, but this is just like a general outline of what you can do if you have nothing set up, uh, because something is better than nothing, I can assure you that. Some other basic flows I have in which uh, you can find templates for on Klaviyo are things like order confirmation. Uh, so that way, you know, you're not having to send uh, emails to your customers when their orders are coming through and confirmed through Shopify. I, I know, I think Shopify has a setting for this as well. Although I like to keep all my data in Klaviyo, that way I can just see all my analytics in one place. Uh, so order confirmation and then also shipping confirmation. For myself, I get a ton of customers asking when their product is shipped or when it will ship just because they're excited to get it. Um, so this kind of takes a load off of my VAs and not having to communicate back and forth because it automatically syncs with Shopify and they get notifications when their order ships and can actually track it through the email as well. On that note, Clavio also has a ton of flows that I didn't mention as far as purchase anniversary, post-purchase thank you, cross sales, product reviews, um, they have a huge template library, so I definitely recommend checking that out. Next, we're gonna move on to email campaigns. Uh, what is an email campaign? So like I mentioned earlier, email campaigns are manual campaigns you are sending out to a segment or a list of your customers to let them know about upcoming sales you're having, holiday drops, new product drops. Again, what I like to do here is actually just subscribe to my competitors list, see how many emails they're sending per month to their customers, and that can give you a good idea of what you should be sending to your customers. Uh, personally, outside of Q4, I'm sending customers anywhere between uh, three and five emails a month. Now, not all of these are transactional, and what I mean by that is two to three of them. If I'm sending five, I would say two to three of them are transactional, mean, meaning I'm pushing sales, pushing discounts, talking about different bundles we're doing, talking about different cross sales, um, but the other two are actually just like informational or we like to share testimonials from our customers or upcoming products that are coming to our brand. So you don't want every single email you're sending to be like, buy my product, buy my product. You want to build that connection with your customer because uh, you don't want them to unsubscribe from your, from your email. So you really just want to provide value here. Uh, the more value you provide, the stronger connection you can make with your customer, the longer lifetime value you can get out of them. And then for email campaigns, which are the ones you're sending out manually, um, you can send them out at specific times. Now, I found that early morning works best, but I'm I'm constantly testing, you know, is it 7 a.m., is it 8 a.m., is it 9 a.m.? So again, this will depend on your niche, your brand, when are your customers checking their emails. Um, and this all comes with split testing, so definitely recommend Split test everything. That's that's the, that's the best answer I can give is just test everything and that's how you'll figure out what works best. One thing I wanna to touch on really quick is actually list cleaning. Now this is only gonna be for people that have larger audience sizes or people that have been running email campaigns for upwards of six months to a year. Now what you'll notice is your open rates might start to drop which can hurt your deliverability and you end up showing in the spam folder rather than the inbox. How we can avoid this is again, providing the most value to your customer not spamming them with discounts and sales emails, um, but also list cleaning. So I'm gonna show you a quick chart here. Um, <clears throat> this can reduce unsubscribe rates, increase your deliverability, retain engaged customers, and then you can personalize the content uh, best based on your customer list. So this is what I follow. I do it about every six months to a year, which is what Clavio recommends. Um, so just copy this. Now essentially what this is doing is anyone who has not opened your emails the last year, anyone who's not engaging on the emails or shows absolutely no interest in buying, we wanna get those people off of our list just to make sure we have a healthy list and it's only people that are passionate about our brand that either have purchased or potentially could purchase, whether it could be the holiday season. So again, this is only for larger lists and people that have been running email campaigns for six months to a year and have a larger audience size. Uh, I wanted to talk about subject line and preview text. Now, <clears throat> this is essentially the two in subject in the inbox. Um, actually, what I'm doing best and what I've found best for subject lines is just, you know, so if I'm making a, a Mother's Day email, I would just type in Mother's Day subject line on Google. And <clears throat> essentially, you can just browse and figure out uh, other brands have already done these split tests for us and they will give you the best open rate subjects and the best open rate peer review text. That way you, going into it, you have a good idea of what to expect. So I typically am just searching, you know, the best open rate engagement subject line for Mother's Day or whether it be Black Friday. So that's a good little tip there if you're not, if you don't know what to put for the subject line. One other point in Clavio is you have two different, you have lists and you have segments. Now they're a little bit different. A segment is a list of people who are dynamically updated through Clavio. 
They are a variety of different segments you can make and a variety of reasons to use each. One reason I would send an email campaign to engage people from the last 30 days versus everyone on my list is that people who have engaged with my brand in the last 30 days are more likely to purchase from me and are also more likely to open my emails, boosting my engagement rate. You can test different segment sizes and create different campaigns for each segment. So if I'm sending emails in quarter four, I want to make sure I'm sending emails to my entire customer list because it's everyone typically purchasing. Um, the buying behavior is much different than outside of Q4. While if it's July on a Tuesday, I might just be sending uh, emails to my most engaged email segment list in the last 30 days, last seven days. This is, this is all things I would split test. Um, but typically my go-to is a, either 30, 90, or even 120, last 120 days for engaged with my emails. Pop-up or sign-up forms are very important on your website. This is how we're capturing customers' emails and putting them into our, in our welcome flow and all of our other flows. Now, you ideally want to make two pop-ups to your website, one for desktop and one for mobile. Uh, I, I recommend doing two separate ones because it will help with overall performance, um, as well as split testing the actual offer itself. Now, what I have found is typically the uh, if you're running a percent versus a dollar off, typically uh, what I've seen in my brand is the dollar off will actually do better just because uh, people don't want to do math and figure out which one's greater. But if you just tell them if 10% off and $20 off is the same discount, well, $20 off is typically performed better just because instantly people are like, wow, I get $20 off rather than uh, sitting there and trying to figure out what is 10% of this. and. So I would start off a dollar off, but definitely, you know, split test everything. Like I said earlier in the video, split testing is key. I didn't talk a whole lot uh, about SMS in this video. Now SMS is very similar to, to email marketing or Klaviyo. You have flows, you have campaigns, you have a ton of templates in either Klaviyo has an SMS little tab, and then I use SMS bump. This is a screenshot of my uh, total revenue and then uh, flow costs and orders that have come through my SMS. Now, as you can see, I've paid $1.33 for this flow to send out and it's made me $4,000 in revenue at a 43% conversion rate. Now, this is some of your lowest hanging fruit. This is just, uh, and this was my abandoned cart SMS, if you're wondering. I'll show you an exact uh, layout of the flow I'm, I'm using so you can copy it in your brand and test what works. But again, um, these are just simple integrations you can make in your business that can, uh, I mean, for a dollar make you, in my case, $4,000. I mean, this is, these are some of the lowest hanging fruits and 100% recommend you add these as soon as possible. If you guys need more help in Klaviyo, email flows, campaign segmentations, I highly recommend reading through Klaviyo's help center, which I will link below. It has a ton of great articles and is where I started to learn about list cleaning, campaigns, flows, they really have it all there. So it's a great resource to use if you're a beginner. Other than that, we always have one-on-one -on -one mentorship in the Shopify Ecom Freedom Group. So come join us there, link will be below. That's all we have for today. So thank you for joining and I'll catch you next time.